in Yellow Springs, Ohio, a small community with an eccentric spirit, one engineer is tinkering with what could be the next big thing in agriculture. We've got probably 20 million animals sitting behind me. But the goal here is we have to actually grow bugs in a safe and responsible manner to get a safe product into our food chain. Glenn Courtright is breeding black soldier flies with the intent of using his army of insects to recover food waste and help feed a growing population. But this new bug protein won't be feeding people, at least not directly. Instead, bugs can be used to grow more of the food that people are already eating. At a busy seafood restaurant in Grand River, Ohio, diners feast on oversized platefuls of perch, salmon, and shellfish. And they're not alone. Fueled by a demand for healthy, nutrient-rich proteins, our appetite for seafood has been growing steadily over the past five decades. Well, seafood in the United States is the second largest deficit, second only to oil. It's healthy, and it will continue to grow in people's diets. To meet demand, farmers like Tom Mockamer have embraced agriculture's fastest growing field, aquaculture, the raising of fish in captivity. I raise bass, perch, bluegill, tilapia, and any other species that the people want. One of the biggest expenses in raising fish would be the fish food, and fish meal is obviously a big component of that. Off the coast of South America, smaller fish like anchovies and sardines are harvested and ground up into what's known as fish meal, then paired with filler proteins and fat from corn and soy before being formed into pellets. The fish meal, which makes the food palatable to bigger carnivorous fish, is key. You just can't take a soybean and throw it in a tank and think that those, that fish is going to eat that soybean. He's not going to do it. Fish meal tastes good for the fish, and so in order to get them to eat food originally, they have to like it and they have to like the taste of it. But fish meal comes at a cost. We're harvesting more from the ocean, so the cost of fish meal has, has increased drastically in the last three or four years. We're harvesting faster than we can grow them, and so anytime that happens, there's an environmental impact. But it turns out that fish also like the taste of insects. And back in Yellow Springs, Glenn thinks his soldier fly-based insect meal could be a viable replacement for fish meal. Insects are one of the most efficient converters of raw materials on the planet. They take care of most of the waste around us, and they'll eat just about anything. We've taken brewer's grains. Uh, we work with a number of microbreweries, including the one right across the parking lot from us, uh, the Yellow Springs Brewery. By feeding this material to the larva, the larva make it into a consistent source of fats and proteins. These consistent fats and proteins make the insect meal nutritionally equal to fish meal. But to make EnviroFlight commercially viable, Glenn requires a steady supply of baby soldier flies. And while they aren't particularly fussy eaters, putting soldier flies in the mood to mate takes far more effort. Okay, so this is the inside of the love shack, and this is where we get the black soldier flies to mate. We get mating going on 365 days a year, regardless of weather conditions. Now, what we're looking for in the cages is when the flies get tail to tail, and what that indicates is we're starting to mate. They are notoriously hard to get to mate. We know how to create the right mood. But the music playing through the speakers in the shack is not necessarily part of the mood. The flies can sense the vibrations in Barry White's deep vocals, and playing this music keeps them still so workers can harvest their eggs. Once the eggs are collected, we go to a nursery where we hatch them out. The females will lay approximately between 500 and 900 eggs, but they're so small we can't count. In the nursery, these tiny hatchlings are grown for about two weeks on a specially formulated diet before they make their way to the production room where they munch on food waste and multiply in size. All right, so now we're in our production facility. If we look at this bin down here, these guys have been to work for about two weeks for us. And if you recall how small they were in the nursery, these guys have grown 5,000 times in a span of about a week and a half to two weeks, and they've been fed a diet 
of broken cookies and crackers and the scraps from a chicken nugget factory. So these guys have reached their peak size and we're about ready to process these into fish food. At this stage, the larvae are dried, combined with other ingredients like soybean and cornmeal, and formed into pellets. What we have here is we have our insect meal. This is what was the final product from our processing stage. This material here is about 65% protein and about 10% fat. This is what we use to replace the fish meal that normally comes from our oceans. So that's processed into, into a little pellet that looks like this. Fish are like other animals. You know, there's probably more bugs eaten out there by other forms of livestock and animals than we're ever aware of, but it is a viable source of food for many different species of animals. Glenn says his research proves that fish like the taste of his insect meal, and he hopes to make it commercially available soon. But his product is still undergoing independent testing. And while his sole aim is to manufacture feed for fish and other livestock, one prevailing view is that to be truly sustainable, humans should be the ones eating bugs. And the other parts of the world don't have any problems you know, consuming insects. Now in the Western world, we're looking at this solely for a feed augmentation for our agriculture and very efficient use of space and a very efficient use of resources. We've got a population that is 7 billion heading for 9 billion. Our oceans are being overfished and we have very wasteful food practices. So what we do here, we have the technology that can solve two problems. We can solve a food problem and we can solve a waste problem.